Hello. And welcome to a tutorial about the Synthstrom Deluge sound design, along with a few pretty crazy sound design features. Now this tutorial won't cover anything but uh, sound design. So if you want to learn more about the machine uh, itself, check out my other video with a full review of what this thing can do. What we're going to do here is cover just sound design. Before we start, uh, a few notes about uh, entering notes. You can use the deluge pads to enter notes. Here, like a guitar, every row is a fourth above the other. Or you can use an external MIDI keyboard. The guitar style layout makes actually a lot of sense if you're not used to playing a piano. Because it's what's called isomorphic, which means once you learn a shape, you can replicate it anywhere across the scale. Uh, transposing is very easy. Take, for example, a simple minor chord. Every time we play it across the scale, it's a different shape with different combinations of black and white keys. Whereas on an isomorphic style uh, input, it's always the same shape. Take a seventh chord. Right? Super easy to transpose. Whereas on a piano keyboard, it would be a nightmare. Major seventh. Again, once you learn the shape, just play it anywhere, it's the same chord. If you have a friend that plays piano, ask them to transpose chopsticks half a semitone up. It's not a pretty sight. But I'm using a MIDI keyboard here uh, for two reasons. Number one, because I'm used to it a little bit. Um, uh, bad childhood. And uh, second, because there are a few features in the Deluge that you can benefit from if you use uh, an external keyboard. Things like velocity sensitivity, pitch shifting modulation, and I'll show you what you can do with that later. Just a few words about sound design and synthesis overall. The basic unit of sound synthesis is the waveform, and the, most, the most basic one is the sine wave. If you look at the spectrum analyzer, you'll see it generates just one frequency that moves around the spectrum as you play notes. As waveforms change, you'll notice on the spectrum analyzer, there are a few more lines. Those are overtones, or in case of simple waveforms, harmonics, which are multiples of the basic frequency. This is a sawtooth wave, which is extremely harmonically rich, so you see a lot of lines um, to the right of the fundamental tone. Now the deluge and other uh, synthesizers use the term subtractive synthesis because they, they start taking away harmonics and change the character of the sound. So. Check this out, as I apply a low-pass filter, as I change the cutoff frequency, harmonics are taken away, look at the waveform on top, it almost becomes a sine wave, and as I add harmonics back, it's back to a sawtooth wave. Now I want to discuss um, filters, uh, low-pass, high-pass, cutoff points, and resonance a little bit, um, so if you're familiar with those terms, just skip ahead. Now I found the best way to explain this is by, I'll lower the sawtooth wave here, uh, by using a noise waveform. That's white noise, it's just basically random frequencies across the spectrum. Sounds like this. Now that peak you're seeing on the spectrum analyzer is resonance. Let me lower that using this button here. So we see only the filter. And as you see, when I lower the cutoff point, only low frequencies are passing. When I make it higher, high frequencies are passing. And the resonance is an emphasis, is gain on the cutoff point. So as I move the cutoff point, you can see a uh, gain emphasis wherever it's at. So that's a low pass filter. A high pass filter uh, is a filter which only lets high frequencies pass above the cutoff point. So let's take that same waveform and gradually introduce a high pass filter, which means cutting out the lower frequency. So here's noise across the spectrum, low cut out, and low brought back in. So those are the basic elements of subtractive synthesis. The deluge also supports FM synthesis. FM, or frequency modulation, is a mode 
you can select in the uh, synthesizer settings menu. And once you do that, uh, you're good to go. Oscillators in FM synthesis are sine waves typically. Um, they're called carriers and they have no harmonics except if you hit too hard, uh, but that's just distortion. And you can go ahead and uh, I'll add the second one. So now we have a second oscillator, sine wave. It sounds the same thing uh, unless I transpose it. Let me go into the uh, transpose section here. Let's transpose it an octave down. So now I have two sine waves. Okay, still no harmonics, unless there's distortion. And then to make the sound more interesting, you have modulators. Modulators basically change the frequency of the carriers very rapidly. It's sort of like an inverse filter, adding more and more overtones to the sounds. So you've got one modulator that's connected to both carriers and changing their frequencies around. You can add feedback, which furthermore changes the, uh, the character of the sound. And if I go into the second modulator, that can either change the first modulator or the carriers. And you, ch you choose the destination in this menu. So this is affecting the carriers or now it's affecting the modulator. Uh, FM synthesis can very quickly sound like noise. So I don't want to spend more time on this. Uh, in this tutorial, we might do it later on. Uh, the last mode while we're here, last mode available in the deluge is ring modulation. Uh, the idea here basically is that the first oscillator is multiplied by the second one um, and that creates um, sort of a more distorted sounding um, a waveform. The deluge is also a sampler and lets you play back samples. So as I go into an oscillator, Besides the waveforms, I can choose any sample I like. Let's take this uh, Rhodes piano sample. Just load a sample and uh, play with it very easily. So long complete samples are a shortcut to sound design, but we don't want to take any shortcuts. So this brings me to the first uh, crazy feature about the synth in the Deluge is that you can load uh, single cycle waveforms into it. Now, this isn't a documented feature, so don't blame me if this breaks at some point, but it works now. And the idea is that you load a short waveform um, and for it to work well, you need to go into the settings and loop it. Right, and then it just plays over and over, and you've got a one cycle repeating itself, and you can you ha can create some pretty crazy waveforms. Now, there's a guy called Adventure Kid that has a website where you can download thousands of these for free, uh, and just drag and drop them onto your deluge. I I did. I put all uh, I think four thousand seven hundred of them um into a folder and it only takes about 180 megs uh, so you've got plenty of space free um and just play around with it there's you can get create some pretty interesting sounds with these wavetables now we're actually going to do some crazier stuff with this so stay tuned but i want to move on to something else uh before we get to that so we already talked about the ability to load in samples uh, but what i'm calling crazy feature number two is the ability to load samples into each of the oscillators and layer them. So I'm gonna go into oscillator two here and load um, a sample into it, let's say, pan flute. And now I've got the piano and the pan flute layered together. You can hear it better if I uh, lower the pan flute volume a bit. And, uh, oops. This sounds even better. Uh, let's say if we take uh, something else. Strings, yep. We'll use the um, shift shortcut to lower the volume of the strings a bit. Yeah, that's right. There you go. Brand new sound made by layering uh, two samples one on top of the other. Pretty nice. Sounds even better as you play lower. Another nice, nice thing that you can do with samples is you can pitch them um, dynamically. 
So pitch modulation works on samples as well. I think that's pretty neat too. Really like how these things sound together, especially as you go lower and deeper. Sweet. Next cool feature is filter layering. Here I've got a high pass filter and I'm bringing up the resonance on the low end to add some bass. And I'm showing this first on a noise oscillator just to show you what's going on. Now most synthesizers will just stop at that, let you use just one filter at a time. But the Deluge lets you combine filters. So I'm gonna use the gold knobs, which are automatically configured to a uh, low pass filter to add a low pass cutoff in addition to the high pass filter. Let me show you what this sounds like on a sound which isn't noise. Shortcut, bring up the volume of the oscillator. Yeah, that's a really nice way to get a good bass effect without losing the high end, or at least letting you filter the high end dynamically as you want. You could actually take it further if you like by going to the equalizer in the effects settings and adding even more bass. Or treble to taste. All right. Next crazy powerful feature is unison mode. And I want to show you this by taking a simple wave take this uh, sawtooth wave and move into voice the voice menu and click on unison and what this does is replicate it with a detuned a detuned frequency so I increase it from one to two and immediately the waveform becomes more interesting uh, and I can increase the detune as well And this is a really simple way to take a, a super simple waveform and uh, just make it a lot more interesting. And you can add up to I think, eight uh, different voices here. I don't think you need that much, uh, but certainly two or three um, is extra spice to, to any waveform. Now, the nice thing about this is that it also works. I'll go into the uh, oscillator here. It also works on samples. So let's uh, pick one. And I'm going to go into my single uh, cycle waveforms here. Just uh, pick one. Here we go. And uh, I'll loop it. OK. And you can see that uh, what's a relatively simple shape becomes very, very interesting. Super powerful way to make interesting sounds with uh, very simple waveforms. So that is unison. All right, let's talk about modulation. Um, I'll take a simple uh, waveform, let's say a uh, triangle wave. Now, modulation is typically associated with changes in envelope, so how quickly a, um, a sound starts and then decays and releases, or LFOs, uh, which is a repetitive motion, repetitive modulation, but it can actually, modulation can actually come from multiple sources, not just envelopes and LFOs. But let's start with something simple. So I'll take my triangle wave, um, and let's look at filter changes, a low-pass filter. So I could go ahead and change the frequency of the low-pass filter manually, right, with a knob. Open filter, closed filter, and going up and down. Now, doing this manually, obviously, is not practical. So the way to get repetitive automation of this knob motion is with an LFO, a low frequency oscillator. I don't like that name too much, uh, but as you see, that's what it does, right? It moves the knob at a low frequency, um, and then we don't have to do it manually. 
there are two kinds of LFOs. LFO 2 starts every time you hit a key. Right? So there are different cycles of motion for every key pressed, as opposed to LFO 1, which just goes ahead and cycles through all the motions for all the keys at the same time. Now, there are plenty of synths that give you modulation, but what's special about the Deluge is how it presents the modulation on a grid. So the low pass filter shortcut button is blinking to show that LFO2, which is also blinking, is affecting it. And the crazy powerful thing is that any one of these parameters, envelopes, LFOs, and a whole bunch of others, can affect almost any one of the uh, parameters you can change regarding a sound. So we were changing the low pass filter. Let's try and change something else. Shift transpose. Okay, let's affect the pitch of the oscillator. Shift random, and don't forget to increase the depth of the modulation. What this does is every time I press a note, it picks a random number, and that will modulate the pitch of the note randomly every time I press a key. Notice we still have the LFO modulating the frequency of the filter. Okay, so we saw that we can have different modulation sources, you know, an LFO or a random number, modulate different parameters, but the deluge takes it further. You can have more than one source modulate the same parameter. So let's pick, for example, an LFO. I will increase the mod depth. So now the pitch is also affected by the LFO. And if I exit uh, this particular menu, you'll see the pitch has two associated blinking modulation sources. The LFO on an ongoing basis and a random parameter affecting pitch every time I hit a note. By the way, if you want to turn off a uh, modulation source, hit the parameter and then just turn the modulation depth to zero, exit, and it will stop blinking. That uh, source is no longer affecting the parameter. Same for the other one. Done. Now, we can go even deeper down the modulation rabbit hole by having a modulation source affect a modulation source. So let's take, for example, a low-pass filter, frequency, and I'll modulate that with LFO1. Okay, let's choose a depth. Great, now LFO1 is changing the filter frequency. Now to patch another source to this modulation source, hold your breath, we're going menu diving, hit the button again, choose the second source, and then associate a depth with it. Okay, pause and rewind if you didn't catch that. We're a few levels deep here, and we're having LFO2 affect LFO1, which is affecting the filter frequency. All right, if your head is spinning, let's wait for it to stop, because the next one is a sound design treat, and I need you focused. So, remember how before we said you can load two different samples into each oscillator, and you could load wavetables into each oscillator? So here's one wavetable that I've got in oscillator one. Nice, easy one. Let's lower the volume for oscillator one. Let me play oscillator two for you. I've got this crazy uh, wavetable in oscillator two. And what I've done is I've taken envelope two and applied a slow attack to the second oscillator. And what we have now with the deluge is a crazy mighty morphin power oscillator changer that will take one wavetable and basically morph it into the other one and we're not going to stop there because voice unison mode can ap be applied to those two wavetables as well i think the second waveform sounds like an fm synth we're morphing a subtractive synth into fm i'm not sure that's even legal that ticks the crazy powerful box for me. Okay. On to the next sound design topic, which is recording manual changes to parameters over time. That's pretty simple. Uh, here I've got an external MIDI keyboard. Pitch is automatically mapped and easy to record. Uh, if I wanted to map an ex a control on my uh, external controller, uh, for example, let's take... Um, filter frequency. So I'll hit shift frequency for the filter, click learn, and then move the slider. And now uh, the slider on my MIDI keyboard 
is controlling the filter frequency. So I can control that line if I wanted. Or uh, if I wanted to record this motion, all I'd need to do is um, get, the, uh, get the track going. And then if I hit uh, record, then any motion is recorded onto the track. No need for the metronome, of course. Okay, so that is how you record manual uh, parameter changes. Okay, the next stop on our sound design train are the effects. Uh, and that's pretty easily selected on the effects menu. There are modulation effects. Manager, chorus, laser. Let's go through these uh, quickly. Um, equalizer we talked about. Delay we'll talk about. Reverb. Uh, there are a bunch of parameters that you can configure for the reverb. Amount, room size, uh, and so on. Decimator, bit crusher. But my favorite is the delay. There are a few parameters here. Ping pong makes it stereo. Um, but uh, you can really control most of it using these two knobs. Um, and you can just go crazy with this. The minute you pass the halfway mark um, on, the, uh, on the bottom knob, uh, it starts to, to create this feedback effect. Um, and let me just get it right. Let this. Yeah, it loops on itself. I can play with this all day. And there's an analog delay and a digital delay. Uh, they both sound great. So that's deluge delay. Next up is sidechain. So I just created a simple repetitive drone loop. One bar. And I'll go into sidechain and activate it for this loop. But of course you can't hear anything because sidechain is basically volume ducking um, as affected by a kit track. So here's a new kit track. And you can see how the volume of the synth is ducking every time the kick is hit. I can lower the volume of the kick. And you can see as I change the placement of the kick, even though we're not hearing the kick, we're hearing the volume of the synth change based on kick placement. Next up is filter envelopes. Now there's nothing special about the way the Deluge does filter envelopes. Uh, I just think it's an important topic as part of a sound design tutorial. The idea is that, um, you know, if you want to sound like this, that starts with a filter going up, opening or closing, as part of the character or timbre of the sound, this is how you do it. I'm going to be using envelope 2. Shift this button to set the attack, make it slow. The decay, make it short. And just sustain all the way up. So short decay doesn't matter. Uh, and re release doesn't really matter uh, in, this, in this case. I just want the filter to open up. And it's not happening yet because I haven't linked envelope 2 to the filter frequency. So I can do that with a shortcut or just get to the parameter, click again, assign envelope two, click again, and increase the amount. And you can see how the filter opens up as I press the keys as part of the attack of the, um, of the sound. If I set the amount to negative, then the filter will go down, filter frequency will go down instead of up. The last topic I want to talk about is learning about sound design, and in particular deluge sound design, from the patches that come with the machine, because they're pretty interesting. So there's a nice feature in the deluge where you can scroll through the, through the parameters and 
every parameter that's affected by modulation, for example, let's see, this one, the amount, you can see that this little dot here and the corresponding pads show you which modulation source is affecting this parameter. And of course, you can click in to see uh, the exact details as well. So you can use either the pads or the menu uh, to figure out what's going on and to see what is affecting the parameters that create these, uh, these interesting sounds. So that's it. If you like this video, hit like. If you want to see more, click subscribe. Thanks for watching.